Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Oh, that was nice. I was Hello. expecting him to say hi back. <laughs> uh, welcome to welcome to the massive verse. Uh, I hope you're all having a great Our Morphicon. Uh, so why don't we just why don't we just dive right into it? Sure. Uh, what is the massive verse? Kyle, you normally answer that. Is sort of what I was. <laughs> So the Massive Verse is um, our new creator-owned superhero universe um, at Image Comics. Um, for how many of you have heard of Radiant Black? How many of you heard of the Massive Verse? How many of you have either not heard of them or have heard but have not read them? Awesome. Okay. Both of you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I will take this moment to introduce our panel. Kyle Higgins, who just spoke. Yep. Uh, writer and co-creator of Radiant Black. Radiant Black, uh, as well as Shift. Uh, I mean, if you're just going to list characters, oh, yeah, we'll be here all night. <laughs> there's uh, a yellow one, there's a pink one, there's a red one. Spoilers, Kyle. Ryan Parrott, writer and co-creator hey, of hey. Rogue Sun. So powerful. Oh, they can hear that. Never mind. I'll, sorry. I'll, I'll watch my jokes. Melissa Flores, writer and co-creator of The Dead Lucky. And Megan Camarena, a co-writer of Radiant Black 12, co-writer of Radiant Pink. Uh, and also, I'm Michael Basudel. I edit and design all of these comics. Woo. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to uh, if I could get the next slide, please. So, Kyle. Yep. Uh, the first book in the Massive Verse was Radiant Black, which you co-created with Marcelo Costa. Uh, without too many spoilers, sure. what is Radiant Black? So Radiant Black is, um, I like to describe it as Power Rangers with adult problems. Um, our main character who we first meet is Nathan Burnett, who is a, uh, a struggling writer in Los Angeles who's trying to be the next great like LA crime novelist, like a Raymond Chandler. But when we meet him, uh, stuff hasn't really gone his way. He's got about... $48 of, uh, in a checking account and $38,000 of credit card debt. And he's working as a, as a rideshare driver as the bank's turning down his loan. And so by page four, he's moving back in with his parents in Illinois, and he and his high school best friend find this miniature black hole, and he transforms and becomes radiant black. And if I could get the next slide, please. Mm-hmm. And he becomes something uh, much more than he is and becomes a part of something that is ever unfolding here over the last now year and a half of our, um, of our series. Um, a lot of the story and a lot of the characters come from personal places. And, you know, as a, as a later stage millennial, um, navigating kind of, you know, the... the the what's left of the lie of the American dream is is very much a something that um, I wanted to explore with this and and this our generation that lived through the transition to the internet and you know you're told the world's supposed to work one way and it doesn't and I feel like every generation goes through that and this was my way of not only grappling with that but exploring it through the aesthetics and the lens of our childhood. And so when Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came out in 1993, obviously it was like a bomb went off. I don't have to tell everyone in this room about it. Um, so that was always the mantra that I took when I was writing the Power Rangers comic book, was to write the show not as it existed, but as I remembered it making me feel. And Radiant Black is kind of the next extrapolation from that. Uh, if I could get the next slide. We also do some pretty crazy things uh, with the book. Um, is that the next slide, Michael? Yeah, that's the slide after that, if we could hit the slide again. Uh, Kyle, do you want to talk about what this is? Yeah. Oh, this right here? No, this one. This one right here. So I come from a film directing background, and Radiant Black, while trying to be a very, very, you know, dynamic kind of edge of your seat uh, superhero series, also is a love letter to being a fan of superheroes. So the two main characters, Nathan and Marshall, um, grew up as fans of superhero comics and movies, in particular uh, one called Cowl, which was the like mid 2000s um, biopic blockbuster of the real Cowl in 1960 Chicago, which is another book in our in our massive verse. I have it here. I don't think I brought it up. The mystery. Um, but 
for this particular issue, issue 15 of Radiant Black, he goes up against his greatest challenge yet, creative license. So there's an unauthorized fan film in Lockport being made of who'd win in kind of a you know, death battle style uh, video these YouTubers make, uh, this channel called Versus, who'd win in the battle between Radiant Black and Blaze from Cowl. And uh, as you can see here, um, this, the film is boarded out because we made it. So in the issue, uh, the film actually gets released, and you can scan it with a QR code in the story. And you can see, as a surprise, this five and a half minute fully animated film where, oh yeah, uh, Will Friedle of Batman Beyond and Boy Meets World voices Radiant Black. Or as they say in the comic, Eric Matthews with superpowers? Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, and Kyle, on top of, you know, insane things like this, mm -hmm. crazy uh, shit. we also make a lot of stuff. If I could get next slide. Kyle, do you want to talk a little bit about merch? Well, one of the things about being a fan of superheroes is, is, is being a fan of uh, the gear of superheroes, at least for me. That, that's always been a big thing. And, um, you know, fortunately on this series, Marcelo Costa, my co-creator and, um, my, my, and our artist, our series artist, between Marcelo and the gentleman to my right here, Mr. Massiverse himself, Michael Basudel. We don't we, do that. We have. Uh, it's actually a swag suitle. It is swag suitle, you're right. <laughs> to be clear, so we that don't do better. any of this. Yeah. Mr. Massiverse himself, the swag suitle. Um, <laughs> I'll just go. You, can you see, guys don't know what's on the rest of the even, slide. You can see, <laughs> even on these slides, how incredible and impeccable the design is. And so everything we do. Um, really lends itself to some of the coolest looking uh, merchandise uh, that you can get tied to a comic. Can you, go, can you tab back, actually? I'm not controlling it. Can we go back a slide, please? So every issue of the series, we do an exclusive item that's only available until the next issue comes out. So these are some of our prior exclusives. And, you know, Michael and I were just talking about uh, a few days ago how truly wild it's been. We've been on this kind of six-week convention tour and just meeting so many people kind of across the country and how many come, like, are wearing some of our Radiant Black gear. So in, in lieu of Morphicon, uh, we thought it would be awesome to open up the vault. And so right now on our Black Market Narrative website, um, all of the prior exclusives are available. Um, I see someone melting down here in the front row. <laughs> um, but uh, all, all items, all former exclusives are there, as well as some additions to our new uh, line of books. Uh, there, for the first time, there is a Rogue Sun uh, shirt and a Dead Lucky shirt with a Radiant Pink shirt coming very soon Wait, as well. what? Mm-hmm, you're getting merch. I didn't know. <laughs> well, that's exciting. <laughs> the Radiant Pink series uh, will be, there will definitely be a merch ramp up for its December launch. Yeah, it will probably have like glitter and burritos on it. I imagine I th stuff with cats. I, I actually, I have a lot of ideas. So. There should be a, a Megan burrito variant cover. Oh my God, yeah. please. And it's just made from a wrapper of a former burrito you ate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like that. Yeah. He'll do it. Like, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> the reason I was quiet is in my head I'm going, well, I guess I'm designing a burrito wrap it <laughs> That's, we should do oh, that. Actually, for the, for the pop-up. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the release. Yeah, okay, we got actually, ideas. Yeah. Welcome to our lives, like. everyone. Yeah. Welcome to our lives. Uh, so, Kyle, if people want to catch up on Radiant Black, if we could get the next slide, yeah. please. Uh, what's so the, out right so now? So the good news is, it's, is we've designed it to be very, very accessible. So it's three trade paperbacks worth at this point. Now the third trade paperback hasn't yet come out because our final issue, and I have issues 16 and 17 here that will be, uh, you know, we're going to be do, doing some Q and A uh, later. And I would, I would say, think about some questions now because we have some awesome stuff we're going to be uh, looking to give out for for those with questions. Um, but volume one collects issues one through six. Volume two collects issues seven through 12, and the upcoming volume three with. It's not on there, but a nice pull quote from Wilfred L. Uh, Batman Beyond himself uh, is collects issues uh, 13 through 18, and that will be out, Michael, in October. In October, we have the first two volumes at our table uh, at booth 416. Um, all Morphicon, though, right. and a little extra. We don't just do Radiant Black. There's spoilers. Some others as well. If we could get the next, how do you want to talk a little about Radiant Raid first? So Radiant Red is a miniseries that um, Cherish Chen, who co-wrote, 
uh, Radiant Black issue number 16 with me, uh, wrote, we, is it up on the screen, Michael? Uh, sorry, oh, there we go, there we go. Um, so Radiant Red is the, uh, the next uh, part of Satomi San's story, who was, is our Radiant Red uh, character, this 28-year-old Japanese-American woman who's a, uh, you know, up until this point in her life, a school teacher, um, living kind of a, a certain level of expectation, um, both from her family and a uh, societal want, uh, standpoint. And then when the Red Radiant comes into her life, um, it kind of gives her this, uh, this extra ability to go perhaps further in the direction of who she, if not wanted to be, perhaps was meant to be. And so we followed up issue six with this five issue series by uh, Cherish and David LaFuente of Ultimate Spider-Man, one of my favorite artists in the industry. And um, this, uh, we've got actually some issues here with, you can see some stunning variant covers. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so those are, again, people with questions. That's, uh, that's literally the bar. Um, and this, this, uh, the first collected edition of Radiant Red will be out. In December. In December. December. And is this the first time we've shown the cover? Uh, I think it is. I think it might be. This is the new uh, the collected edition cover for Radiant Red. And Kyle and Melissa and Megan, would you guys like to talk a little bit about Radiant Pink? Who is Radiant Pink? I think Megan should answer that. Um, okay, so Radiant Pink is basically heavily inspired by my own life as a content creator and streamer. Um, and I was just thinking, like, I worked with Kyle. He was always asking me questions. He's like, what does, like, your streamer people do? Like, what do, how do they game? What if they became a superhero? And I was like, that would be sick. And he's like, you want to work on uh, Radiant Pink together? I'm like, oh. I thought my Power Ranger days were behind me. This is a... Uh, just like, starting. Just starting. And I think it's a beautiful beginning. Um, so Eva is someone who is extremely eager, trying to do so many things and be so much to so many different people because she has a large audience that um, she loves and cares for. Um, same with her family and close friends. But given the opportunity to be a superhero, um, she's finding herself being like, how much more can I do, and where is the edge of myself? So this is a um, this is the uh, one of my favorite characters in the Massive Verse, and uh, we've shown her origin in issue twelve. We've shown um, some of her early uh, interactions, early adventures, as uh, blending streaming with superheroing in Radiant Black issue 11, when she teams up with Marshall, uh, Radiant Black. But now, starting in December, we're going to send her on a whole new adventure of her own. And this is what happens when worlds collide, uh, both literally and figuratively here, as Eva bouncing and, and very much in a state of uh, perpetual chaos. Would that be a good way of describing her life? <laughs> yes. Perpetual kinetic chaos uh, finds herself in a very unlikely uh, place, or should I say series of places, with some unlikely people. And as she hops through eras of the universe, or not eras, um, how would you describe it? Uh, uh, places? Space. Spaces. Of, spaces. Right. Spaces of the universe. Space world stuff. Um, the question of whether she's gonna, going to be able to come back and come back the same is, um, I think, probably... Um, at the very least, one of her problems here. Mm -hmm. The exciting part about all of this is I'm constantly texting Kyle and Michael and being like, okay, can, what if there, can I say the one text that I sent you? Or I don't know much? which one. <laughs> There's a lot of texts. It was a really weird one. You didn't respond, but you screenshotted it and sent it to Michael and was like, what the Oh, fuck? yeah, you can or, say that. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Oh. I was like, okay, I want to create like a, like a bad guy, but could it be like a slime? that is super cute, but then when it opens its mouth, glitter spits out, and maybe it has eyeballs on its tongue, and then it makes your clothes disintegrate. And then I didn't hear back from him for a while, and I'm like, I'm I just gonna put it notes. in. Yeah. FYI, this is also why I'm co-writing the book, because then I can be like, <laughs> okay, but what does the slime want? <laughs> yeah, Melissa's very good at reining me in, but I'm also like, I, if you, you saw me on Hyperforce, I really like to bring She's the chaos. She's yeah. yeah. Well, and the good news is that on the art side, we're joined by uh, the 
really the next legend in a long line of kind of family legends, uh, Emma Kubert. Oh, love her. She's so so great. Emma will be illustrating uh, all of uh, Radiant Pink uh, with Rebecca, um, is it Rebecca Nalty yep. joining us on Colors. And there's going to be some preview pages of that running really soon. Um, yeah, it's very, very, very fun. Yeah, it's, it's really gay, too. So um, <laughs> we've got to gotta have more queer superheroes, you know? That's the stuff I want to read. <laughs> and uh, if we could get the next slide, Ryan. Hey. You co-created Rogue Sun with Abel. I was did. that second book in the Massive? It's true, yes. Uh, um, okay, question. Who is Rogue Sun? Who's Rogue Sun? Uh, is anybody here, and this is, don't lie, have you never read Rogue Sun? Raise your hand. Okay, well, it's way a lot. Okay, you over here, I'm going to give you, this is the first issue. I got the first one, so you can come down, and you're going to read it to the rest of the class. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> here you go. And then somebody else, yeah, here, you can have this one. I, so this is the only two number ones I have, so I figured you can get them out of the way. So you have to read them throughout the entire, you, know, you don't have to pay attention to me anymore. Um, so yeah, so Rogue Sun's the second book in the Mass Your Pleasure. Um, and it's about a guy, his name's Dylan, he's 17 years old, uh, his dad left. Uh, most stories are about uh, kids who get pushed into the lockers, my, guy, my story is about the guy who does the pushing. Uh, so he's more like Flash Thompson than Peter Parker. Uh, he finds out that, you know, his dad left when he was two, he's not a particularly good kid, finds out one day that his dad has passed away. So he goes to a will reading where he meets his dad's other family and his other kids. Unfortunately, he also finds out that his dad was actually a superhero, and he's left his mantle, which is called Rogue Son, to him and no one else. So the story is about a kid who has to become a superhero and unfortunately has to learn about the guy he hates most in the world. If we could get the next slide. That's him, and it's very fiery. I'm a big Ghost Rider fan, so I'm stealing left and right. Yeah, I rock on. Thank you. I love those Ghost Rider claps. Thanks, that's great. I love it. <laughs> I, just to contextualize for a second, because one of the things I think is, is so much fun is that all of us have a relationship with Power Rangers. We have all worked with Power Rangers uh, narrative, and I, I can tell this story. There was a time Ryan came in with me. He's like, I want to do, you know, be a really cool Power Ranger. <laughs> this is uh, it. This is all, this and, and again, you can see like we are influenced by all of the same stuff that we love. And Ryan said, I want to do, it'd be really cool if you did a Power Ranger that had flames coming off the helmet, like fire, like an Inferno Ranger, because it's something you can't really do on the show, budget reasons and uh, health and safety probably. <laughs> um, but in a comic, we could really style it out. And the great thing about the Massiverse is again, it's all creator owned. So all of that stuff that we build, now we own and can build out ourselves. So it's really the place to take all the stuff you love and have always wanted to do and channel it here. And so as you can see, it's, it's built out as a whole new si section of the Massiverse. We don't I, I, have to worry about brand roles because yeah, we we're no. making them up. Yeah. yeah, it's our brand. I got to steal from my old ideas that I never got to do. <laughs> And so this is everything that happens in the first series. I only know about half of it. The other stuff I'll make up later. So uh, that's all right. <laughs> and uh, speaking of doing the stuff that you've always wanted to do, right? we've got a very special issue of Rogue Sun out next month. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about this one? Yes. So going into issue seven, we, like Kyle has a, as you can see, a guy who makes animated films off of uh, you know, QR codes in the back of comic books. I don't do that, uh, but I'm learning. I'm trying to make my way up. And Kyle was like, try to do something crazy with Seven. And I was like, okay, I got an idea. We're going to do a choose your own adventure with Seven. Uh, do you remember those books, you know, where you had to like flip through and you're like, you're an astronaut. Do you want to go get the wrench or leave it go? And then you go get the wrench and you die. That's what we're doing, but not an astronaut. Uh, but so, yeah, so we're doing a whole issue where it's going to be, is a slide or no? I don't have a slide. No slides, dang. But there's a really cool narrative reason for where the character is and how this is kind of, yeah, it spoils Which we everything. won't spoil. We won't spoil. No, 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 no. Don't, people haven't no, read but, but just the yet. idea. That's the thing is it's not, it's, it's something that is informed by yes, yes, yes. where he is at. And it's not just a gimmick, yes. It's yeah. actually, a, we, that was the point where that guy was like, I pitched it and they're like, well, it's got to be something that was the character. And I said, well, it's a good place to have, you know, the character learn how to be his own man and make his own decisions. So that's not a and spoiler. And what if the reader had to do the same thing? Exactly. So yeah, it's, it's you get to play along and be Rogue Son for right. one and find out how hard it is to actually be a superhero. And I will say, we, we proofread this this morning. and Very nice. It's, it's come together really nice. Yeah. So yeah. if I could get the next slide. If people obviously want to catch up before this, yes. what can they do? You can come on my booth. Uh, I don't know what number it is. It's next to Kyle's. Um, 418. Thank you. Uh, this is what he's here for. Is I, don't, I don't pay attention. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have the first trade out. Uh, it's a very snappy cover. Um, this is right behind me. Uh, and Abel, Abel is the artist. Uh, 
people have asked me where the design came from, and I said, how about a night that's on fire? And he was like, done. So yeah. So yeah, that's the first six issues, the first arc, and you can come and get it. You know, and actually, um, some all of these covers uh, are, I should call out, being incredibly striking pieces on their own. We do have prints of some of these, and we've kind of curated a series for Morphicon that we'll have at the booths as well. Uh, so yes, this is issues one to six. So if you're hearing this and you're like, what's all this, and I want to read this Choose Your Own Adventure, you can catch up on everything else that's out before you start with issue seven next month. Yeah, and Eric Kripke liked it. That one, that's good. <laughs> what would he know about superheroes and family issues and, everything and I supernatural him. Everything elements? Everything I taught him. <laughs> Uh, if we could get the next slide, please. Melissa. Yes? Who or what is The Dead Lucky? Uh, so has anybody read The Dead Lucky? It just came out. Hey, thank you. I love you. So The Dead Lucky is the newest series. It's a video, Kyle. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> the Dead Lucky. I need to catch my attention for a second. The Dead Lucky is the newest uh, series in the Massiverse, and it, it follows Bibiana, who is a former soldier who has just come home from Afghanistan after losing most of her platoon in a horrific accident. And he has, she has come home to San Francisco and discovered that it has been privatized by a company named Moro, who might sound familiar if you have read a little bit of the ship series. Or Radiant Black. Or Radiant Black. They're a corporation who have come in and decided that they are going to take care of San Francisco and make sure San Francisco is the city of tomorrow. And of course, in doing that, that means cleaning up homelessness and wiping out crime and doing all the fun stuff that in theory sounds great, but in reality is actually terrorizing a lot of lower income people and people that have lived there for years, and uh, especially Chinatown. They're like Blackwater meets Boston Dynamics. Yeah. With a little bit of like Apple. Yeah, yeah, they've got a sleeker design. It's like than if Google Boston went Dynamics. evil. Wait, is the Apple adding a little evil? Why, why do we... yeah, there's okay, there's, ro cool. there's right. robots. Oh, mm -hmm. Not that we're saying anything about where Google is now, but um, so BB, uh, deciding that this isn't cool, has decided to take matters into her own hands. And uh, luckily for her, she came back with not just a bunch of survivor's guilt and PTSD but also some electric superpowers that allows her to see energy spirits and electric currents and possess machines with the spirits that she sees. If we could get the next slide. And maybe even some of the spirits that she's lost. Exactly. So um, The Dead Lucky is uh, a series about survival and about loneliness and about healing and also about robots and big, big fights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I think this is the I right can't crowd wait for to that. Pick it up. I'm going to make sure I go to my comic book store and pre order it. Yes. Right? So Please that, do. Yeah, for amazing. those that don't know, that is the lifeblood of comics, is the pre order. Um, when you hear us talk on social media or through the newsletter about final order cutoff or the last chance to pre order, um, that's because that pre order number with your comic book store. That's what determines how many copies we print. Yeah. So if we could get the next slide. Melissa, if people want to catch up on The Dead Lucky, because it's just started, uh, they can get issue one from their local comic shop right now. Yes, but I will say a lot of times um, they have been selling out, which is good for us. Mm -hmm. But definitely go into your local comic book shop, and if you can't find issue one, um, download a copy online. Uh, not illegally, please. Cause <laughs> oh, but I mean, and also, I don't know what's, what is this, this here looks like we have m maybe some copies of the Dead we Lucky number one up here. We've got to ask questions. Those and then are questions, yeah. our get favorite a, questions. They yep. get a swag. But there we go. go in and order issue two, please, as well, because that, that would really help us out. Yep. Issue three while you're at it. All of it. Yeah. All of it, just all of it. Put it on the poll list. There we go. Por exactly. Uh, and if we could get the next slide, please. Matt Groom, unfortunately, couldn't be here with us, but Kyle, you do a pretty good summary. Can you yeah. pitch Inferno Girl Red? <laughs> um, yeah, so Inferno Girl Red is Matt Groom, who is, uh, it's uh, co-created by Matt Groom and Erica D'Urso. Uh, Matt Groom is um, one of our closest friends and collaborators. He uh, co-writes Ultraman with me at Marvel. He's also just finished up a run on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers at Boom. Just Power Rangers. Oh, just Power Rangers at Boom. Oh, no, just Mighty Morphin. Just Mighty Morphin. I that's, guess they broke the... I, you that's know, not confusing at all. That's not confusing at all. You leave and it all gets, you know, <laughs> and then you don't even recognize how Wait the title... Wait till it's Mighty, then Morphin, then Power, <laughs> then Rangers. Yeah. Oh, did you read this month's Power series? <laughs> power. 
Um, but uh, anyway, so Matt um, has been building out um, really the longest. This predates uh, Radiant Black, a series called Infernal Girl Red that is a YA original graphic novel about hope in the face of darkness and um, a young uh, girl named Cassia Costa who finds herself um, heading off to a very prestigious science academy um, just as the world, not only hers, but everyone's in Apex City is about to go through a radical change. If we could get the next slide, please. So you can all see this. Now, this actually, can I say, I can, I can tease you Yeah, I think you, you can is. say it. So Infernal Girl Red is actually a legacy hero. And there was an Infernal Girl Red before uh, Cassia becomes uh, the current Infernal Girl Red. Now that's important because of how the powers work, where they come from, and when they arrive. But this is a series that touches a very different kind of, um, I would say, uh, I don't want to say genre, but it's definitely a different reading experience. It, it, it reads like a, like, a, like, a, like a Studio Ghibli film. Like page to page, it's just beautiful. It, it's, 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 I can't say enough great things about the job that Matt and Erica and Igor Monti on Colors have done on this. So this was a Kickstarter that we launched uh, last year. So the Kickstarter hardcover edition will be in backer's hands uh, this January. But also in January, we're going to be putting out, this is actually a 120-page original graphic novel. We're going to we get the next slides. We're going to be putting this out in uh, serialized chapters of 40-page editions with Image Comics as a part of our Massive Verse line. Oh. So if you missed the Kickstarter, don't despair. We're going to be putting this out in these uh, really awesome serialized editions. With, uh, we have so many amazing cover opportunities here uh, and stunning pieces that artists contributed not only for the Kickstarter but for this uh, serialized edition. And then uh, later in the year, uh, we're the, going to be the image trade will be available for everyone. Yeah, soft cover image collection. Mm -hmm. uh, one one more book to pitch. If we could get the next slide, please. So, you know, we said we're doing a massive verse, but you guys all introduced separate book. Oh yeah, we did. Hmm. What's super massive? Well, the thing about our universe that was really important to us as truly lifelong superhero fans and comic book fans was accessibility. And we wanted to build series that all really are their own worlds. Even within the Radiant Black side of things, like Radiant Pink is a very different series than Radiant Black is, which is a very different series than Radiant Red is. And that's what's exciting to us. Well, what that means is that every creator owns their characters and their, their book um, and their world. And so if you notice, Rogue's, we're all set up in different cities. New Orleans for Rogue Sun, Chicago and Northwest Indiana for <laughs> Radiant Black, uh, San Francisco for The Dead Lucky. And um, it means that you don't have to read any series that you don't want to read. You just read what you like. And everything will be accessible and you'll only need to know uh, what is in each book. But that means that when our characters do cross over, it should be really, really special. So if we could get the next slide, please. So this year, uh, in, in, uh, after, on the one-year anniversary of Radiant Black, we actually rolled Rogue Sun and Infernal Girl Red out to the public by way of a 48-page, one-shot, oversized special drawn by our Ultraman uh, collaborator Francesco Mana and colored by Igor Monti um, called Supermassive. And this was the, this was the um, hour-long... This is the Sentai team-up movie... The two-part crossover in Power Rangers, and it also included uh, probably our favorite uh, our favorite bit, the transforming double-page spread. That's the one that actually unfolds into an eight-page gatefold. So it's a transforming gatefold. Pretty cool. We had so much fun with this that yes. we thought, um, well, hey, let's we should do this again. Sorry, before we get to that, if we could get the next slide, uh, if you. If oh. you're just getting in, uh, if you want to read that one, still available from your comic book shop. Yep. Uh, we're not going to collect it in a trade paperback, but it's got a spine so it can go on your shelf. It can sit right next to your trades. Yep. Now, we did have a lot of fun with this. We did. We're going to do it again. We've announced that. That's not an announcement. 
And we also have a new hero joining the main line in Bibiana, who really feels like the perfect fit. Yeah, well, what happened is Ballista pitched a fit because she wasn't able to be in the first one, and they're like, We okay. put you in at the end. At the very end. She just missed it. <laughs> you're like, like the no. Marvel th you're the Marvel thing at the end. That's all anybody cares about anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing this again next year, and we, we are going to announce something right now. We are. Uh, do you want to say it, and then we'll get the next yeah, slide? Yeah, let me, let me contextualize. Um, so four years ago at Power Morphicon was one of the... Um, one of the greatest kind of experiences of my professional life. Um, it also was one of the worst experiences of my personal life. I blew out my knee getting on stage to run uh, when we did Shattered Grid Live. Um, Woo, that was fun. So, <laughs> so with Shattered Grid, though, um, that, was so, that was a very, very special experience. It was, the last, um, it was the last big story that I wrote on Power Rangers. And um, it would not have been possible uh, without Ryan and Dan Mora, who were doing GoGo -Go Power Rangers, without Daphna Plebin, who edited the line, um, and certainly not without Daniele De Nicolo, who was my, uh, what became one of my closest friends and artistic collaborators. And actually, if you come by our booth in, in uh, Artist Alley here, um, all of the life-size cardboard cutout display characters that we have, Daniele drew all those. So we've wanted to find the right thing for Daniele to come back and join us all for, and we thought that Power Morphicon was a perfect place to announce If we could that get the next slide. In April of 2023, we're doing Supermassive 2, and Daniele De Nicolo of Power Rangers Shattered Grid and Power Rangers Necessary Evil will be joining us. Can we get the next slide, please? There we go. Yay! He's He's all right. <laughs> uh, we we're are putting very, the band back together. Yeah, we're very, mm -hmm. very excited. Wait, yeah. I haven't even seen this yet. What? Oh, whoops, sorry. sorry. This it's just a busy in. weekend. Yeah. This is gorgeous. So this piece is by Daniele De Nicolo and Igor Monti. So uh, if you enjoyed the work, especially that Kyle and Daniele did on Shattered Grid, and I know a lot of you did because you've been coming up to his booth all weekend, uh, this is the one for you. This is going to be something special. For sure. And with that, if we could get the next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's time for some questions. Do it. Do it. So uh, if you have questions, there's some. Oh, there are some mics. There's a microphone there's a mic in the aisle, there. so if we can line up. Group karaoke, here we go. <laughs> what, what are we singing? When did it begin? I'm sorry. That's a Red Sox game. Sorry. Sleek. Is that how they originally started, or did they develop into that? Yeah, no, that's, um, so the question being that the Radiant character is being very sleek and clean, and is that how they originally started? Yeah, that, uh, that was from the get-go. Um, Marcelo, honestly, that's what, that's why we said we have to do this together. Um, we were talking about it and, and figuring out what aspects of different touch points and influences were important to us, and we wanted to try to, um, really iterate from, and, and I really wanted something stripped down that could read from an inch, you know, an inch size. And I also had done four years on, or three years on Power Rangers with expressionless helmets and, and no voices for even performance. And so getting emotion out was really tough. And so I knew, I was like, I want, want Spider-Man energy eyes. He's gotta have Spider-Man energy <laughs> eyes. Um, and then from there, we built out what I think is um, one of Marcelo's finest, finest designs, and he is just, he's, he's an exceptional designer, so. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to grab, do you want to come up and- Oh Kyle, yeah, I'm so sorry. Doing? I'm sitting here promising stuff <laughs> here. So we're going to give you a copy of Radiant Black 16, Radiant Black 17, and a special variant from Radiant Red. Now available on eBay. And he's signing them too. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get in line. <laughs> Melissa, if you have questions, you can just ask me. While he does that, let's go. Next there question. Go. Hi. Um, so oh. one of the biggest appeals for me for Radiant Black and like the Massiverse in general is the amount of diversity within it. Mm -hmm. We have queer stories. We have uh, stories coming from different like people of color and stuff like that. Has that always been the like the idea of the jump? That's one of the biggest reasons as to what attracted me to Power Rangers was that there was diversity on the screen. 
So knowing that these yeah. stories are coming from writers that have experienced those things, um, is that going to be a continued thing? Has that always been the, the idea from the start? Yeah, that, so yes, it was absolutely, absolutely the idea from the start. It was also something that I was looking at and taking into consideration where building out specifically the, the first Radiant characters and who everyone was and what their makeup was and where they were from, it, I was looking for ways to bring in some other voices. And so co-writing each character's kind of origin special felt like a really nice way um, to, to do that. Um, and it also allowed, my, my favorite thing about all of this, honestly, is, is the collaboration, like truly. Like I say that the best part about making comics is the collaboration, but my favorite part is doing it with my friends, and that's what this is. And so any opportunity to bring more people in, um, especially, you know, the voices I believe in, is really important to me. And look, the, the book has been marketed as like a superhero series for a new generation. Well, so much of what we want to do and try to capture is the world outside your window in the way that Marvel used to do, right? That's what Marvel 60s really was. Well, the world outside your window is very diverse and the book should reflect that as well. And so that's something that, you know, we've all kind of, you know, it's been important to us and um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that was the plan. Thank so, you guys, you guys are doing of course. amazing. Also, so a couple of things, I've got some books for you here. We're gonna do Special issue of Radiant Red. We're gonna do a variant of Dead Lucky One. You don't have this one, right? I do not know. <laughs> we're gonna do, uh, and we're also going to we're gonna do our issue 16 uh, Ukraine uh, benefit oh cover. And I also have a fifty dollar gift code for Black Market Narrative. Oh my God! So come on up. <laughs> nice. Right. And while. We take care of all of that. Let's do another question. So as a longtime comic fan, I've uh, been able to notice bits and pieces of where you guys have drawn inspiration uh, for your stuff. Well, given that a rogues gallery is being built up pretty firmly in uh, Radiant Black, we're getting a solo story a la Flash Rogues at some point, right? I mean, we've got to. Uh have you, is issue 17 out, Kyle? Of who? Of who? Of our rogue. Oh, of our rogues? Is issue 17 out? So issue 17 that just came out here is 16 and 17. Exactly. It's yeah. building up highly on there. We're getting solo story from their point of view at some I point, I mean, right? wouldn't it be great to, to like, read the, like, um, escaping from the cops, like, buddy cop, midnight run, sheer and excel, maximum mm -hmm. acceleration, like, story? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a thing that should have to mm -hmm. definitely happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> So we're really, got, we're really glad issues. you didn't say no. That, was, that would have been terrible. So I'm going to give you uh, our 1 in 25 uh, variant covers for issues 16 and 17. These were a series by, um, uh, I believe, Polish artist uh, uh, Luna. I can never pronounce her last name, but she's one of my favorite fine artists uh, out of Chicago. She does plain air paintings. So these are all uh, her paintings, and then Marcelo Costa added a radiant black. All right. Let's do another question. You too. Hello. Um, you guys have such a great understanding about uh, real life issues between families, grief, and uh, how they deal with real world issues. Uh, were there any stories or news articles that helped give you a view into people's lives or a specific uh, viewpoint? Um, or do you draw them from uh, experiences in your own life? Um, I, I think most of it's my own life, but like you flip it so that you don't make it too much your own life. So your family doesn't get your family, your family gets very you angry at you. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. So I think it's mostly just sort of finding the the truth and sort of the reality of the of, of your life, and then flipping it in that way. But like no, like uh, outside your own window. Like the reason Rogue Sunset in New Orleans is that's actually where um, I where I proposed to my wife. Uh, she, she was writing out there and I came out for two weeks and fell in love with the city and so that's why a lot of that is in there so that's part of it is just going and experiencing and traveling and then being like I want to do a book here now it's a great excuse to go back and get a lot of beignets so. hey do you want to go to New Orleans for a rogue sun party I, we should totally do that alright let's have a conversation about that uh, anyone else where does where does the inspiration for your sort of characters problems come from um, so for me, San Francisco, I did not grow up in San Francisco, I grew up in LA, but I wanted a coastal city and my partner uh, grew up in San Francisco and I was always fascinated by the dichotomy of San Francisco with new tech and old city. And um, it felt like the perfect place for BB to be from. 
um, it just makes sense considering she's very new tech, old spirits. Um, nope. Okay. I, I feel like uh, I was kind of, I'm, I'm like an internet dinosaur. I've been around since like 2007. So it, I had no friends. I was a, I, I don't want to call myself a loser, but I was. I, I had a really hard time connecting with people and I started uploading videos online and all of a sudden I kind of started to find my community and people who liked things that I liked and didn't make fun of me for liking anime and stuff. But um, along the way, I had a really tough time with my identity and my self-worth. Um, numbers and the attention that I got from sharing more of myself left me in a really weird state. And uh, I, it, it's something that we all kind of go through, right? What we show online isn't necessarily us, but it's how we want to be perceived. Well, what runs deeper than that? Um, and, and what's at the surface? And I, with Eva, I really want to explore that and think it's a, it's a fun thing to do because I don't really believe there's too many stories out there that go into that. Yeah, thank All you. All right, uh, if you want to come up and we've got some stuff. And got we'll a do Marco Rena um, a variant for Rogue Sun. I just want to make sure that we get through all of the Yeah, we're going to fast 16 all and these. 17 are reading in black for you. Let's go. All right, so my question is basically, since you've all worked kind of on Power Rangers and the blanket of Power Ranger, how does it feel to, you know, embody your, like, outlook on things outside of Power Rangers and, like, Twitch streaming and mm -hmm. everything like that? How good, like... So you don't have to worry about, you know, the entity of Power Rangers in general. Yeah. Well, I, I can say that, like, so four years ago when we were here, we did, you know, I did my last panel and um, for the comics. And I remember saying that, you know, finding an opportunity like this on a property that has such a, um, an active and um, supportive community around it, it being able to build a new material that is also forward facing for the brand like that's a very rare and unique and special like opportunity and job in comics it really is um to be able to start building that stuff now on our own yeah. is even more special like it's very hard for me to put into words like i for many years you know i've pursued this career in comics and in some ways i've you know i've resented myself for it because I felt like I've been pursuing it at the expense of what I've really wanted to do my whole life, which is direct movies, right? But all of these different things that I've done at all of these different, you know, s stages of my life, whether it be, you know, I, only, I always wrote, but it was writing, so I would have material to, to make as a, as a filmmaker, right? Mm. Well, suddenly, like, I started this career writing comics where that's the only way I'm paying my rent. Mm. And so you better get good. You better figure it out. And it made me a much, much, much better writer. And all of this other stuff, from sound editing to working in editorial to some, you know, motion graphics work, like, we're now able to use all that and build out things that are extra. And those, to me, are, like, the best way I can express myself as a creator. And so, again, like, it's incredibly rewarding. Um, and so I just feel very grateful that we really have this opportunity to do it. And, and you all have been so wonderfully supportive of, of the series so far. Well, let's say it's actually really nice to have so many of us that have worked on Power Rangers together for so long because we had to do so much um, staying in our lanes and making sure we figured out what worked and what didn't that we actually know how to do that instinctively now. So when we wow. build a world together, it makes sense. Yeah. And we all work well together and we all, nobody steps on anybody else because we all like each other and also because we know how to do it almost like an instinct. So it's been really cool that way. I'm just really glad to be here. Thanks so much. <laughs> I wanted to kill Kyle when he was on Hyperforce because he like <laughs> murdered a bunch of people, but I'm, I'm really grateful that we're still friends and yeah. that I, I didn't murder you. I am too. You brought yeah. me an awesome burrito. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got copies of issues 16 and 17 here for you and also another a $50 gift card for Black Market Narrative. Nice. So. Right. There you go. Nice shirt though. Good shirt. Yep. Hi guys. Uh, I've been keeping up in the trades and Supermassive, so right. I'm loving Radiant Black and Thank Rogue you. Sun. I'm really looking forward to being Dead Lucky and Radiant Pink. Ooh, girls, those sales. <laughs> that you, the sales pitch. I was like, ooh, can't wait. Um, I know we have the solo issue coming up for Radiant Yellow. Is that something that could maybe end up being its own series in the future as well? And any other Radiant colors you think <clears throat> might show up? Well, There's one. only four colors. There's only four colors. Um, the radiant yellow issue, though, is very special. 
it is, so <laughs> for those who, who don't know or haven't read issue 17 yet, which is our introduction to Radiant Yellow, um, his, his, his abilities are, are quite, uh, quite interesting. They allow him to perceive all the different branching points in his life and place his consciousness perhaps into some of those branching points and perceive things out. Um, in order to tell his, his, his origin story, we decided to tell it for issue 18 as the four eras of Wendell's life, all separated by 18 years each. And so it's 2002, 2020, I'm sorry, 1984, 2002, 2020, and 2038, and all four storylines run concurrently through the whole issue. So you could actually string it out and lay them out side by side, like time, like timelines. We, we showed that at Comic Con, right? We did. Yeah. Oh, it looks so good, guys. So also, that issue is 2020. Co poor Wendell. <laughs> like, ooh, what's that? 2020, rough year for Wendell. Rough, rough. Yeah, exactly. Rough year for Wendell. For all of us. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so that will be out in about three weeks, and that was co-written with uh, Lawrence Holmes. I co-wrote that with Lawrence Holmes, who's a, a radio host in Chicago. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, well. There's some, there's some crossover with Radiant Pink, perhaps, uh, as we saw when, when, how Eva found her Radiant in issue number 12. And uh, Stefano Simeone did, I mean, work of, a, work of a career on this issue. It's truly incredible. I'm looking forward to everybody seeing this one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think oh, we've we have some issues for, for you. Yeah. yeah, probably two more questions. We could lightning round it. Okay, let's, if you've got fast questions, let's see how fast we can go. Yes, um, just first of all, I never knew about the Massive Verse. I saw the name, I was like, it sounds interesting. I just wanted to come see. Hearing every single person's story about every single character makes me kind of want to get into it. it. Makes me want to read, get nice. to know these characters, just because I grew up as a Power Ranger fan. So I really want to know just kind of how you all, as individuals, wanted to make this new team, this new uh, individuals together. Because we get to do what we want, and Kyle's the best. <laughs> That was a good answer. Thanks. You can clap at that. He was pretty great. <laughs> yeah, pretty that's good. good. Okay. Yeah. Megan knows how to lightning round. See, yeah. the rest of us know. <laughs> All right. $50 gift card for Black Market Narrative to help you get into the massive verse. Love it. Nice. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Let's see how many of these we can get okay. through. Uh, so first off, I just and wanted issue to... issue 16 and 17. I just wanted to say that I was a big fan of the Boom Room podcast. Thank with you. You guys sad to see that you guys don't do it Ooh. that much anymore. Uh, but also, um, in kind of the vein of uh, the, the massive verse. Uh, I, I've only read up to like issue six on uh -huh. Radiant Black, but I noticed that there isn't like a huge emphasis on like martial arts aspect, which uh -huh. is like something that I loved in Power Rangers. Yeah. And again, that's, I'm not like talking bad about it or yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but I was just saying if there's any plans of yeah. maybe, or if I could probably pitch one to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't pitch one, but what I would say is that um, our characters haven't haven't bought the robots yet. Sorry, what was that? I I said our our characters haven't fought the robots. Are yet. you allowed to say that? No. He's no. allowed to say whatever he wants is the problem. Yeah. Um, I would say I would say you should keep reading. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, uh, awesome. Let's do. I think we can do one. And more And we'll give question. you some issues to help. Yeah, that. yeah. Come on up. <laughs> uh, I think we can do one more question. Everyone else, or if you want to have a chat afterwards. Uh, Megan, Melissa, and I are going to a panel next door about the Hyperforce, but Kyle and Ryan are going back to their tables. Well, and we have something, actually, that we're going to be doing here, Michael, at the end, right? Yeah, I was just... Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, Let's cool. do one last question, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Speaking a little bit more about uh, inclusivity, have you thought about writing about a superhero that has, like, physical disabilities? Yeah, uh, yes. The short answer is yes. I actually just did a series um, at Marvel. Uh, I did a, a new version of Dark Hawk, and um, this character, Connor Young, is a star point guard uh, at Empire State University, and he's going to go, or I'm sorry, he's about to go to ESU on a full ride scholarship as a point guard, and then probably go number one overall in the NBA draft. But he has these headaches and vertigo, and, and he falls in issue one, and he ultimately is diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. And so the book is this look at um, it's a look at, because there's a, snap, a synaptic link between the android that is Darkhawk and the person who is controlling it, and so I wanted to look at how that would be affected by someone with a neurodegenerative condition, but also look at what it's like to have, think your life is laid out before you, and that's not the way things are going to go, and what that means also as you look to redefine yourself and become a superhero. And we did really lovely interviews with um, members of the, the multiple sclerosis community, 
Um, and it's out in trade paperback right now. It's called Airborne, and all of those interviews are included in the trade as well. So it's definitely something that I've definitely thought about. It hasn't come up in the massive verse yet, but, um, but stay tuned. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Come grab uh, my last uh, Black Market Narrative $50 gift card, and we're going to sign some comics for you as well. So if we could get one last slide, please, uh, as we wrap <gasps> what up. What is uh, this? I don't even know. Oh. Oh, not again. <laughs> we haven't made another animated film. So you should all scan this QR code because if there's one thing you should take away from this panel, always scan the QR code. So you guys might you want go. to just sort of play through that on your own. We'll give you a, few, a minute or two here. Uh, so while, while you guys have a play with that, Kyle, Ryan, where are you guys at? You have booths are next to each other. Number four, 416 four, sixteen and four eighteen. What? This is so cool. So we're actually so right now some of us are going back to our booths. Ryan and I are going to go back there. I believe there's a hyperforce panel that uh, Michael, Melissa, and, and Megan are doing. We're going next door. But um, come with us. You guys should all come to our booths because as you finish our little uh, survey here, uh, our sync uh, experience, um, what comes with that is an exclusive massive verse poster. And this is the gold foil edition that we did for C2E2. So uh, Chris Boothroy is in the back of the room. So on your way out, you, turn around, you, you can, can see he's uh, holding posters. grab like, this exclusive poster, bring it to our table at any time, and we'll sign it for free. And this is our thank you uh, to all of you for joining us in the Massiverse. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, and you thank can you find so me at a booth 610. If I'm not over there with them, find me at booth 610. I'll sign it too. And, and I would also say, um, let me know which color radiant you synced with. And that I will synced with red. That will, really? affect, that will affect my signature. I built it. I was like, Megan, it, Megan's pink. Cool. I need to do it again. I messed up. I didn't understand. Okay. <laughs> right. Go, go, super massive. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you guys uh, so much. Know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much.